Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in East Bumblefuck, New Mexico, my last day here. And I'm on this beautiful Monday morning, November 20th, 2017, and I need to get up the road here to for the big Sand Hill Crane party going up up the road and want to go check out the Sand Hill Cranes. Before heading back to Texas, I will uh, try to bring you a video of that. But before I go, I got to bring you part three. Part three of today's economic meltdown roundup rant. This goddamn rant every week, guys. Uh, as the New World Order, the global industrial economy, just continuing its absolute ramping up of its attacks against this planet. So in part one, we were in the U.S. looking at the oil and the general economy. The part two, we stayed mostly in the U.S. looking at how big agriculture is taken down uh, the, this country mostly and this planet and we are going to in part three just go roving around the rest of the planet just for a few more pieces of evidence. I have spent uh, eight years of my life in 5,000 videos bringing you the evidence of how we are so fucked. Okay, we're gonna start in the ocean. So this is in this is this country and anywhere on the planet. What is my old Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, the apocalyptimist, old fart, uh, David Attenborough? He is. Uh, good Lord, how old is that man? And he is. You know, they're releasing this new Blue Planet 2, Blue Planet 2 series, and this is from the Telegraph in England. Blue Planet 2 episode highlights how plastic is killing our precious sea creatures. Never thought of this. Blue Planet 2's latest episodes focuses on how plastic is having a devastating effect on the ocean and poisoning our sea creatures. Well, poisoning them, choking them, everything else. Episode 4 of the acclaimed documentary series presented by Sir David Attenborough features a heart-wrenching segment of a hawksbill turtle tangled in a plastic sack. It Detail the show details how plastic pollution is killing whales through chemical contamination. Oh, good Lord. According to Sir David, quote, surviving in the open ocean has always tested animals to their limit, but today they face a new additional threat. Plastic. There you go. Uh, I think we've heard this story before, but what does Newsweek have to say about the subject? Ocean pollution. Even sea creatures in the deepest, darkest ocean trenches are now full of plastic. Plastic is probably, probably everywhere in your life, but according to new research conducted in the very deepest parts of the ocean, that is true even for the most remote, tiny seafloor critters living almost seven miles below the surface as well. Uh, good Lord. Uh, this is from the Sky Ocean 
from Sky Ocean Res Rescue, lead researcher Alan, Alan Jameson uh, from Newcastle University, quote, these observations are the deepest possible record of microplastic occurrence and ingestion, indicating it is highly likely there are no marine ecosystems left that are not impacted by anthropogenic debris. And they show the usual uh, pictures. Uh, the results were both immediate and startling, Jameson said. According to calculations, uh, humans have produced a whopping 9 billion tons of plastic and most of that plastic has been discarded and about 300 million tons of it have ended up in the ocean. There you go. Let's see from the oceans to China. Wow. Here's the No Shit Sherlock story of the week. China. China is the world's biggest energy market mover. China is the biggest importer of crude oil to date, and it is also the biggest single investor in renewable energy. I wish they'd kind of reverse those sentences because, you know, uh, whenever these limp dick mainstream environmental environmentalist, clueless fucking moron, apocalyptimist point to how green energy is saving this planet, they point over there to China. It's green energy program and they leave out the, the uh, inconvenient truth that China is also the biggest importer of crude oil and my guess is gas too. However you look at it, China has become the most dominant player on several energy markets, including coal, oil, and renewable energy, and don't forget electric cars. It is already the biggest car maker in the world, and this will continue to be so for the foreseeable future and even beyond. And that is pretty much what the International Energy Agency said in its latest World Energy Outlook. And it probably did not surprise anyone because China has been swinging energy markets for a while now. Do you think so? From China to the Philippines. Philippines GDP growth exceeds expectations. The Philippines witnessed impressive economic growth in the third quarter of 2017. <clears throat> per the Philippines National Statistics Agency. Now, their sound, now that sounds like a trustworthy agency. The Philippines National Statistics Agency. Hmm. Could not be a case of the fox guarding the hen house. So I don't know. You do whatever you want to with their statistics. According to them, GDP grew 6.9% year over year in the third quarter compared with 6.7% in the prior quarter, beating a Bloomberg forecast of 6.6%. 6 
the Philippines has been one of the best performing economies in Asia so far this year as growing exports, growing exports, and increased government, government spending contributed to GDP growth. Uh, anybody who does not know what increased exports from the Philippines means for the collapse of a planet is not going to find one mention of it anywhere in this mainstream media story. The Philippines to Australia. Didn't I cover this already last week? Oh, well, it bears repeating, asking the question, can Australia surpass Qatar as the world's top liquid natural gas supplier? By 2020, Australia likely will be the world's largest LNG supplier. Uh, there you go. Australia is now the second largest exporter of liquid natural gas with Qatar topping the list. Uh, there you go. Okay, from Australia to Egypt and Ethiopia to the Nile River where we're reading each week this story I've been talking about for years. This is the latest week's installment of the water war. The water war brewing between Egypt and Ethiopia. Egypt warns Ethiopia that Nile Dam dispute is life or death. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi for the second time in as many days delivered on Saturday a stern warning to Ethiopia over a dam it is building after the two countries along with Sudan failed to approve a study on its potential effects. Ethiopia is finalizing construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, its first major dam on the Blue Nile, and will, have, will start filling the giant reservoir behind it to power Africa's largest hydroelectric dam. And Egyptians living downstream from the dam fear that it, the, it will cut into its water supply, destroying parts of its precious farmland and squeezing its population of 94 million people who already face water shortages. There you go. Ethiopia says the dam is essential to its development and has repeatedly sought to reassure Egypt. <sighs> yep, yep, yep. Can you say water wars? Okay, anybody who does not understand why I included this story in my economic meltdown roundup rant, I don't have time to explain it to you now because I have sandhill cranes waiting. Israel to shut migrant center and deport Africans. Israel's cabinet voted on Sunday to close a migrant detention center as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced an agreement, an agreement to deport 40,000 Africans who entered the country illegally. 
ministers unanimously approved plans to shutter the Holot Center in southern Israel and gave migrants a three-month deadline to leave the country voluntarily or face deportation. There you go. Um, most of the migrants come from Eritrea and Sudan, and their presence has raised discontent among Israelis. Mm. Speaking ahead of Sunday's vote, Netanyahu noted that after building a fence on the Egyptian border and already deporting some 20,000 Africans, Israel has reached the third stage of its efforts, quote, accelerated removal. Yes, which means then, quote, remove them without their consent. And anybody who thinks this story is going is limited to Israel got one thing to tell you. Uh, anyway, more on this rant. In the future, let's go over to Pakistan. You know, last week I was talking about India, all the smog in India. Well, how about this? Pakistan, indifferent as smog kills more people than militancy. The toxic smog that has covered parts of Pakistan for weeks now has exposed official torpor, official torpor over rampant pollution that has killed thousands more people than have died in years of militancy. The polluted air that has lingered in Islamabad in recent days was finally dispelled uh, by rain this week, uh, but it's probably on its way back. Uh, but what looks good for Pakistan is still very bad. Even after the rains, we are having looking at six times higher than the World Health Organization's safe limit. Um, Pakistan is already ranked third in the world behind China and India for the number of deaths caused by pollution with 125,000 people in Pakistan killed annually. There you go. The figure is well beyond the estimated 60,000 people who have died in the militancy-wracked country's years-long battle against extremism. And we are going to... Well, no, I don't know why, what happened here anyway. We are going to continue this story, Conservation by Killing, documentary asked if commerce could save threatened species. Could a hunter's bullet be a tool in helping save Africa's endangered species from extinction? The question is one of the many complex ethanol dilemmas Raised by Trophy, a documentary that examines whether commerce can help wildlife conservation. Uh, anyway, this is all tied in with this elephant trophy controversy going on. Uh, let's see, what's next? 
as we travel around the planet. Let's see, where were we on this? Good Lord. Uh, all right, four more, guys. Here is, let's go back to Australia. Rare flying foxes shot in horrific Australia attack. Dozens of rare gray-headed flying foxes have been shot in remote bushland near Australia's eastern coast. Authorities said Tuesday as locals told of a horrific scene when the carcasses were discovered. Uh, the alleged killings followed a spate of animal mutilations in Victoria State uh, involving kangaroos, wallabies, and koalas. Uh, good Lord, so what's behind all this? Uh, they are investigating. Anyway, I, I, I don't know. You decide for yourself whether that's the global, it sounds like just a bunch of fucking assholes, I guess. But let's go over to England today, Zombie Island, where we see the appropriately named headline, Full of Beans, Coffee Grounds to Help Power London's Buses. Waste coffee grounds will be used to help fuel some of London's but buses. Uh, a new biofuel which contains 20% coffee oil. Yes. Uh, where is that coming from? Biobean. Biobean said the average Londoner drinks 2.3 cups of coffee a day producing over 200,000 tons of waste per year. But we're going to save the planet by putting all those coffee grounds in buses. But we're going to, I'm going to skip over, I need to do a whole rant about ecotourism saving the planet. Anyway, that's a whole nother rant. Ecotourism saving the planet. But we're going to wind up with what is Leonardo DiCaprio up to this week. The Captain Planet himself, Leonardo DiCaprio, is launching a new project to help Amazonian tribes fight big oil. There you go. Leonardo DiCaprio transformed himself into the celebrity face of the movement to combat climate change, donating millions of dollars to conservation causes. But the actor's latest environmental effort takes a different approach, putting indigenous people out front. This is Amazon Frontlines, a new nonprofit funded by DiCaprio's uh, foundation, is being launched with the aim of nurturing an alliance between tribe between tribes and trumpeting stories about their fight to stop timber and oil drilling in the South American rainforest. Good for you, Captain Planet Leonardo DiCaprio, for saving planet Earth. But anyway, guys, I have finally come to the end of my three-part economic meltdown roundup rant for November 20th, and I am off into this gorgeous day to watch the Sand Hill Cranes 
flying around paradise while they still can. And I encourage you to get out there and enjoy this beautiful day in the end times while you still can. Bye, guys.